I have played DayZ now for over 5,000 hours, and barely any of those have been as a solo. Solo is by far the most challenging way of playing DayZ, especially now that most players are banded together in large groups. These large groups often dominate the server, making life as a solo almost impossible. But I wanted to see just how long I could survive as a solo player. So today, I am going to take you on my journey of playing DayZ as a solo, taking on the many groups that control this server, exploring a completely new map, and how I built the perfect solo bunker base. Okay, we're back in DayZ, and today, we're playing solo. Because I want to challenge myself, and I think this is the best way to do it. So I've joined a server with a map I've also never played before, so that should keep things interesting. But I also want to set up a bunch of challenges to like, quote unquote, complete the game. For this solo run, I wanted to set myself up with some objectives, so that I always had a goal while playing solo. On this server, there was a pretty extensive range of features that I wanted to complete before ending my solo run. A lot of these were quite simple, such as doing a keycard puzzle or obtaining a car. But others were a lot more difficult, like obtaining a helicopter, claiming a lock crate, or raiding a base. If I could complete these objectives, then that would be a successful solo run in my eyes. I had no idea how any of these objectives would be completed, nor the story that would develop along the way. So I think uh, our best option is to dive right into this and get started. I think we're going to head down south, see if we can get some gear, and um, see if we can find somewhere to build a cool base. With a plan of action in mind, I started heading inland. But before we go any further with our story, let me tell you about today's sponsor, War Thunder. The most comprehensive vehicle combat game out there and it is completely free to play on PC and consoles. With over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters and even ships, you're really spoiled for choice. Imagine piloting a biplane from the 1920s or striking enemies in today's main battle tanks. But what really sets War Thunder apart is its commitment to immersion with realistic graphics, authentic sound effects, and meticulously detailed vehicles. This means your strategies actually matter, so damage enemy components like their engine or ammo racks to take them out of the fight just like you would in real life. And if you're curious about what happens when your tank gets hit, War Thunder has this x-ray view that shows you exactly what happened. But War Thunder isn't just about realistic simulation. They have three distinct game modes to suit everyone. If you want fast paced action, hop into arcade mode. Or if you want the ultimate challenge, simulator mode has you covered. And for those of you who want a balance between the two, there's always realistic mode. On top of this, War Thunder lets you personalize your vehicles with tons of camouflages, historical markings, and even decorations. But the best part of all of this is that you can control all of these incredible machines with just your mouse and keyboard or controller. And my personal favourite feature is that War Thunder runs on a powerful engine that's optimised for even lower end machines, so you don't need any crazy hardware to join the fight. That's probably why over 70 million players worldwide play War Thunder. So if you're looking for an epic multiplayer experience with unmatched depth and detail, look no further. Play War Thunder now for free on PC, PlayStation or Xbox using my link in the pinned comment or description below to sign up. And any new players or those of you who haven't played in the last 6 months will get a huge bonus pack. That includes multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 silver lions and 7 days of premium account. But it's only available for a limited time, so be quick. Getting started as a solo can be quite challenging. So until I had my first base established, I was going to try remain low key, looting what I could on the way inland. Okay, there's a little military base here, so we'll loot this. Oh, what's this? Ooh, 
an M4. There wasn't anything crazy near the spawn, but enough to get started with. Enough supplies to get me inland safely. But I needed to figure out where I was going to build before attempting any challenges. Okay, so now that we've got some gear, our first objective needs to be finding our base location. And because I've never played this map before, I'm going to have to make an educated guess. So let's have a look at the map and see where's probably a viable spot. So we've spawned northwest. Um, and you can spawn northeast too, so my guess is that all the best gear is going to be down south. So we got Bunker Island, um, South Harbor is probably a good spot, the airfield is obviously a good spot. Um, this evacuation center is probably a good spot. So maybe down here on this south shoreline somewhere, maybe like down here. The south coast of the island seemed like the perfect spot. It was close to multiple high tier points of interest and would most likely be the best location to complete the objectives as fast as possible. So with a general area of where I wanted to build in mind, I just needed to get there. Let's head that way and see what we can find. Screwdriver. Oh, a key. This key will open military crates at the radar station south of the airfield. Okay, let's keep that. On my way inland, I would loot for as many supplies as possible, primarily on the lookout for nails and a code lock, but anything really that would help me build my first base. Yellow cabinet kit, ooh. Okay, yellow locker kit. But also on my way inland, I would keep an eye out for anything we could exploit later in our story. There's a shed in here. Dude, look at the amount of storage in that. Holy crap. We need to mark this. If we get a C4, we are so raiding this. Doing a raid was one of my objectives. I knew this shed would be a viable option as a solo player. So I marked it on the map, keeping it in mind for later, before continuing my search for the supplies I needed. Oh my god, we found a code lock. Okay, now we just need some nails. And uh, we got pretty much everything we need to build, I think. What am I hearing? Oh, dude, there's a heli crashed. That's right over this hill. We gotta go for that. Russian helicopter. Okay. Nothing oh, key card. was that? I just got shot at. It's time to run. Okay, that's a big gun. I don't know what that is. This is scary. That guy's so geared. Just run your little legs. Run those little legs. That guy's awfully geared right now. And I don't have the shit to fight him. I don't even know what I grabbed. I just grabbed what I've seen. But we'll get out of here and then we'll see. I know, I know. Maybe a cowardly move to run from this guy. But I had too much to lose. And that guy looked incredibly geared compared to me. The heli crash itself did give us some items, most notably a key card, an item useful for one of my objectives and something that would become beneficial shortly. Nonetheless, I had made it away from the heli crash safely and was quickly approaching my desired build spot. So I don't think we'll be able to build right here because there's a little military there, but maybe down this coast a little bit. Maybe over in these trees? In these trees could be so good. Oh, <gasps> dude, what is this? Wait, what is this? Is this like a key card or something? Oh, <gasps> dude, this is crazy. Can you go in here? Okay, there's nothing in there. 
what's happening. This looks like... Yeah, is this a bunker? It's a helipad. What is this? Come on, it doesn't go dark down here? Dude, what? What? Can we build in here? I mean, there's no loot. Water. Oh my god, guys. There's a... Can I go on this? Oh my god! This is sick. You could drive a boat in there. There's a helipad here. There's a bunker door. Dude, we have to figure out if we can build here. The only way we can figure it out is if we place a flag kit. So I need to get a stick. A flagpole kit. Okay, can we build here? Oh, it closes automatic. That's sick, bro. Oh, we can build here! Oh my god, we have to. Discovering that I could build inside this bunker would not only make building a base 10 times easier, but also allow me to have a perfect base to live from as a solo. So I placed some storage, locked it, and stashed some gear away. In order to secure this bunker, I would need to find some nails. So I think my main objective now should be um, fortifying this bunker into our main base. And I need nails, but this is a construction key card, so maybe that will have what we need. Red door garage with supplies located in the South Harbor. That is right next to us, so. Let's go do that. This key card was located right at the South Harbor, a point of interest located right next to the bunker. So I grabbed the key card and headed out. This key card could be located anywhere inside the harbor, and whilst looking, I managed to find some hidden stashes with some extra gear before locating the key card itself. It was tagged with a construction key card, so the hope was that it would have the nails I desperately needed to secure the bunker. Is it this? Oh, it is. How do you do it? Just press F. Oh, shooter. Oh my god, nails. Exactly what I needed. So I left the South Harbor and went straight back to the bunker in order to make the fortifications I needed to make this my permanent base. Okay, I think we're clear. Successful run. We got the box of nails we need. Got another code log. I think all we're missing is a hatchet, and then we're good to build. As it turned out, I still needed a hatchet in order to build. And whilst I was looking for it, I ran into some trouble. Holy fuck, there's a guy right next to me. This guy was right here somewhere. He's right there. Oh, you're joking, bro. Dude, how, what is body armor does that guy have? Damn, they were geared, bro. How did they survive so many shots? This death was a very good introduction to just how geared the players on this server were. It was late into wipe, so most were running extremely high tier armor and weapons. If I wanted to compete, I would need to play my cards right when approaching fights. But this death was a blessing in disguise, as on the way back, I found everything I needed to fortify the bunker. Crap. 
Workbench cat. So this should allow us to build door kits and stuff. So we need a bunch of planks and then our nails. So craft a... Yeah, so we need to craft a door kit. Let's start with that. Okay, so we want to do this door. Perfect. Okay, nice. That looks perfect. So if I open that, I then can open this. Then I can go three. Nice. Perfect. And then if I look at this from the other side, I can't really see it. Yes, dude. This is nice. This is really good. Okay, so we need to put code lock on that. Okay, nice. Okay, so we got a front entrance. Now we just need to block up the other entrances for now. We can make it so we can come through this, but no one else can. Okay, so we should be able to use this ladder and no one else should be able to. So no one will be able to get on the ladder, but we'll be able to use it from the other side and it should phase us through this wall. Which means we have an escape route that no one else has. Yes. Nice. With the bunker fortified and officially mine, I could turn my attention to obtaining some decent gear to compete with the heavily geared players on this server. I had collected quite a few keys from looting, using these on the locked crates around the map would give me the gear I needed. Open crates in the evacuation camp, that is right nearby, so we're gonna head over there, see if we can get ourselves some better gear. Okay. We're at the evacuation camp, so I think there's a bunch of like little crates lying around and I think you go around and open them with this key. Oh yeah, look, someone's already done one, but this is the crates I'm on about and they spawn like gear inside. I actually need this. Oh, I find one. Right, okay, so how does this work then? Bring a key out, unlock. Okay. It's unlocked, we open it. Okay. Interesting. It seemed these crates give you some pretty decent gear, so I looked around for one more, and this time got pretty lucky. Unlock. Ooh. Oh, wait, I'm right here. I have a key card for right here. And that ruined the key, so it has two uses. That is good to know. Right, this key card, where is it for? Police station. Where is the police station? Is that a police station? That is a police station. Okay. There should be a key card in here. Aha. Oh my god. Let's go. That was insane. This key run proved to be a good way of getting loot, so after depoting, I decided to do another. It was on my way to it that I would be introduced to our neighbours. Pretty sure I just got shot at. Yep, I got shot at from behind. Oh, it's from that base! No way. Building. One guy. Look at him. Roof camping. There's two at least. They're building a treehouse. 
It's kind of cool. I think it might be worth keeping those guys in mind. They're active, got a big base right on the south. Could be a potential enemy. But right now, I think we gotta focus on the mission. We gotta fortify our base more and just get more gear. These guys in the treehouse would be on my watch list, but there wasn't much I could do right now. So I just continued on my loot run. Okay, another evacuation key. The rest of that stuff isn't really useful. Wait, there's a heli crash right down here. Oh! <gasps> Dude, it's just crashed. I'm going for it. Let's see what we can get here. Gilly suit. It's kind of nuts. AK-12. Ooh. Another key. That's good. Another holster. I think that might be it. Okay, let's get back over here, do this key, and then let's get back to this. Ooh, not bad. With another decent loot haul from the keys and heli crash, I made my way back to the bunker, ensuring to keep a safe distance from the treehouse, but they live right next to me. Yeah, these guys literally live about like 600 meters away from me. That is not good, man. It was only a matter of time before I had another encounter with them, but I couldn't worry too much about them right now. I needed to remain focused on fortifying the base more and getting high-end loot to compete with the groups on this server. This has been a bloody pretty solid start as a solo. I had filled this base with some decent loot, at least enough to start competing for some of the best gear on the server, but in order to do that, I was going to need to fight. If I was to win fights against other groups, then I was going to need to play my cards right. On this server, there were multiple ways of doing that. High tier key cards, lock crates, and airdrops, to name a few. All of these were often competed for by squads. But what seemed to be the easiest right now, for me at least, was an airdrop. So I sat waiting in base for the next one to pop up. Oh, care package to Fort Meaden. We could go for that. Let's do it. Why not? Care package deployed and I'm flip now. This might be a close one. The Fort Meaden airdrop was rather far away. And as I got closer, I realized I was too late. Oh, the airdrop's already on the ground. Yeah, say we bin it off and we go to the airfield one instead. Luckily, another one had spawned at the airfield, and this time, I made sure to be early. Okay, five minutes. We need to figure out where we can snipe this airdrop from. It's gonna land about 600 meters that way. Maybe I sit in the sandbag nest? Just wait until the airdrop drops? I should have a pretty good line of sight on it from here. Oh, shots nearby. More oh, airdrops deployed. Oh my god, the amount of zombies. Oh, someone's shooting the zombies. Oh yeah, look. Oh, dude, that guy's geared. <laughs> oh, dude, the airdrop comes down so fucking fast. What the hell? Oh, dude, I have to push in. Another guy shooting at him, perfect. Dude, I don't know where this guy's win. He was but yeah, he's there. Wait, is he hurt? Is it once? Oh, please let me hit this guy. Is it again? Dude, come on. Dude, how did I miss that easy shot? No, my gun clicked! I have no ammo left! He's dead! 
That's a zombie. Where is he? Oh my god. Oh my god, he's so good. Oh my god. Okay, we need a stash. Let's get an ATC and then we'll go for that drop. Chad. With this guy having one of the best loadouts on the server, I now knew I could compete against the other gear players. But I wasn't quite ready to leave the airfield yet. I still had an airdrop to loot and he was fighting someone else. He killed another guy over here. Oh, what the hell? There's a bunch of guns spawning up. What the hell? Oh my lord, dude. What? Okay, well, we're going to depot again. Bloody hell, dude, there's so much loot. There was more loot than I could carry, but as a solo player, I had to take this opportunity and grab as much as possible. Alright, we gotta go try and get the drop, man. Okay, let's give it a go. Wish me luck. Okay, not bad. Uh, grab that, grab that, and back to the ATC. Yes, it's all here. Alright, we need to be as fast as possible. Alright, okay. It is definitely time to go. With me being solo, I couldn't exactly grab everything. So I grabbed the best and left the rest before heading back to the bunker. Home sweet home. Oh my god, what a run. This is insane. Let's just get inside. Oh my god, let's go. Right, let's see what loot we got. Okay. SVD. We got this MCX spear, which is nice. We got like tier 3 helmet. Tier 3 vest. Um, we got all this. We got all this. Oh my god, what a run! The loot was insane, so much so that I had to place even more storage. For a solo player, I was now well equipped. But best of all, I managed to obtain a bunch of key cards, most notably high tier key cards, one for the Toxic Zone, and a blue key card which was used to unlock lock crates. I was now in a much better place as a solo. It was at this point, however, that I decided to take a break and eat some food. There's a guy that's had my base. Hello? Hello. Hello there. How are you doing? Hi. It's two. How's it going, guys? How 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 does the bunker feel, huh? Oh, it's pretty good. I had no idea who these guys were or what their intention was, but I had a few objectives, such as making an alliance. So I wanted to keep talking Don't. and see if they were trustworthy. Hello. How long have you been living here, man? Uh, just today. So, are you like new on the server? Yeah, li li this is my first time playing, man. Literally. You need anything? Um, I know I'm playing solo right now. You guys friendly? Uh, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. I'm gonna drop my loot. I'll come out. Alright, let's see if these guys are. Oh, cool. I'm not gonna go that way. I'm gonna go out this way, and then that way, if they kill me, they can't get in. 
Alright guys, I'm coming up the helipad, okay? Hello. What the fuck? It's my secret skip. How did you... Oh, oh gotcha, 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 gotcha. You guys are juiced up, though. Hell yeah, man. Where you guys live? <laughs> um... Do you live in that treehouse down that way by chance? Yeah, we do. These guys were from the treehouse that had shot at me earlier. But they had offered me supplies and seemed friendly and after all didn't shoot me when I came up the ladder. So maybe they weren't as bad as I thought. Doing alright all right, for all looting right. stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's just base building stuff I need really. Alright, such as? Um... Code locks, probably. Hey man, you're gonna be in your base for, I don't know, next couple minutes? Yeah, yeah, I'm just organizing loot, so. Alright man, we'll uh, hook you up with a little uh, welcome to the neighborhood kit. Oh, yeah? nice. Are you guys, um, yeah, are you guys uh, needing anything yourselves? Only raiding components, if you raiding came across like any okay. so far, like sulfur, charcoal, I have a few charcoals and s uh, I have a few charcoals, but that's about it, really. Well, we have a lot of charcoal as well. That's fine. Well, we don't really need anything. We'll just get you a starter thing. Alright, bro. That sounds good. Hey, man. Well, that's interesting. Maybe those guys aren't as bad as I thought. So, as it turned out, the treehouse dwellers seemed friendly. And it got me thinking. Maybe having them as an alliance would come in useful instead of having an enemy on my doorstep. The only question, could they be trusted? Hello, man. Well, I got you guys a gift as well. You're going out your way. Oh, yeah. It's the only sulfur I have. When these guys returned, they came with gifts. And for that, I was willing to take the risk and trust these guys. Having an alliance would come in extremely beneficial as we could continue trading for items we both needed. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm friendly and uh, if I'm ever passing over that way, I'll, I'll let you guys know. We got it. Well, Not if yet. you ever need something, um, just, uh, you know, throw a message out there. Alright guys, nice to meet ya. Hi man. Good luck guys. Love you, bye. bye. Okay, we might have just made an alliance with the guys who we thought were going to be trouble. So, to simplify things, we now had an alliance with the neighbours who I thought were going to be trouble. And this would come in useful, especially later in our story. For day one as a solo, we had also made significant progress towards our objectives. In fact, we had completed four of them so far, and through doing so, had become a pretty stacked solo player. But we only had one door, and so next, I wanted to expand the base a little. Okay, a bunch of planks. Okay, we got an airlock. Before logging off for the night, however, I wanted to do one more objective. And with the amount of sellables I had collected today, I opted to focus on buying a boat. It would allow me to have much easier access to some of my objectives, such as the Toxic Zone or Oil Rig. Okay, so we've got a bunch of sellables that will go to the trader, and we've also got a keycard up near the boat trader. One thing to know on this server is that the traders move around and they aren't safe zones. So at any moment, I could be killed here. So I cleared the area first, making sure it was safe to trade. Okay, wandering trader, what's looting? Okay, I think that was everything. 122k. Let's get out of here. Bloody hell. Time to go buy a boat. With a successful trader run, I continued my way all the way to the north of the island, back where I had spawned, and looked for the location of the keycard that I had brought with me, but unfortunately it had already been done. But this wasn't a wasted journey, as the boat trader was right nearby. Oh, he's right here. Bit of a weird spot. 
Alright, what boat should we get? There we go. Get in. Oh, that was loud. Okay, let's go. I got a boat, fellas! Let's go! With a boat now acquired, I could now easily make my way around the island. And on the way back to the bunker, I would see some of the locations I would need to visit in order to complete my objectives. Okay, here's the toxic zone. So we can access this via boat, but we need the gas mask from base. And then we can come and do this. I would also see the oil rig. And with an idea of the layout of both points of interest, I could approach these objectives with a much broader understanding. My neighbors are on the base. Hopefully they don't shoot. Yeah, they're waving. Okay, they know. Okay, back at the bunker. Let's go. In we go. We want to park it right up beside this. Okay, home sweet home. With the final objective I wanted to complete for the day done, I decided to fortify the back entrance of the base before opting to call it for a night. Nice, our back entrance is looking good bro. And we got the boat here. Let's go. Day one as a solo had been a massive success and we had completed five of our objectives already, but we still had a lot to go. Things like obtaining a car or completing a quest may be easy, but getting a helicopter, claiming a lock crate, or defending our base would be much more difficult. However, we had laid the foundation on day one, and so as I logged out that night, I knew for the rest of our adventure, we could focus purely on completing objectives. What a day. First day as a solo. Let's see if the base survives tonight. Alrighty, we survived the night. Okay, so to start the day, I think we should jump right into it and go do the toxic zone. I'm pretty sure we have a keycard too. We do. Staff quarters located on one of the ships. So we'll take this. We need to find our gas mask. There it is. Okay, this is all we need, I think. Our boat is still here. To start off day two, I decided to put the boat to use and head out straight to the toxic zone in order to strike it off our objective list. Alright, let's go. Okay, into the gas cloud we go. We gotta be as fast as possible. Okay, let's go. Okay, so on one of these ships there should be a staff quarters. Oh, is it gonna be this? Requires toxic zone. Okay, this is the key card. Oh my god. That's a sleeping bag. Permanent one, I think. Captain's quarters key card for here as well. Not only did this key card give us really high tier loot, it also gave us another key card for the toxic zone. So I decided to do that before leaving. Oh my god, dude. Let's get out of here. That's insane. Let's go. Let's get back on the boat and back to base. Day 
A2 was already off to a great start, and surviving the toxic zone meant another objective was complete. The plan was to keep this momentum going, so I returned to base to depot and decided that I next wanted to buy a car. However, in order to buy a car, I was going to need money, so I grabbed a bunch of keys and some of the keycards and headed out on the hunt for sellables. Oh wow! Okay, not bad. Sulfur, yes. It was whilst doing these keycards that I found out how to do quests. Oh my god, I thought that was... Wait... What is that? It's definitely an AI. Oh, it's a trader. Or a quest. Collect all the knives and you get like one of the following items randomly selected on quest completion. Well, we know where the quest guy is now at least. The knife quest seemed like the most viable option, so I would need to keep an eye out for all the custom knives this server had. But in the meantime, I was still on the hunt for sellables in order to make some money. So I headed over to the airfield to do some more key cards and keys and found a pretty interesting item. Raid alert sender, what is that? This item would allow me to set up a raid alarm in my base, but more on that later. For now, I unlocked as many crates as I possibly could and gathered as many sellables as I could get my hands on. By the time I was on my way back to the bunker, I was pretty certain I had enough. But I had got some pretty cool items along the way and I was really interested to see how that raid system worked. I'll figure out what that's for later. It says it needs to be attached to a raid alert base, which I'm assuming is like a big box that goes underneath it. So. We need to be on the lookout for one of those. If I was lucky, then I could buy the parts I needed at the trader. So I gathered everything I had collected so far and headed out. Alright, we're good to go. Okay, let's hope no one's here. It's not a safe zone. It was incredibly important that this run went smoothly. Not only were we here to complete another objective, but I wanted to see if there was some items we could get in order to upgrade the base further. I think we'll just need a quad bike. I mean, we're only solo. Yeah, let's buy a quad bike. And while we're here, how much are helicopters? We can get a one-person helicopter for 255k. Oh, while we're here, let's buy a bunch of storage. Raid alert base. Isn't this what we need? And th Yeah, let's buy that and that. Okay, we've got everything we need, we've spent all of our money. The question is, where did the quad bike spawn? Oh dude, look at this! Get in. Start it. Let's go! We got a vehicle. Albeit, it's only a quad bike. Dude, look at us go! Let's go. Perfect. Alright, I think we should put a garage door on here so no one can steal that without raiding. And then from there we should probably organize the base. Thankfully, the trader run was a success. We got a car suitable for a solo and to keep it safe I secured the garage outside. I then placed all the extra storage I got before looking into how this raid alarm worked. Okay. Then get this on there and then attach this. Assemble raid alarm. Here we go. Okay, so now that's assembled, we can set up alarm. Oh god, this looks complicated. Oh no. Don't know what this means. Ping here. Save changes. And if I do this, and I send test message, it works, bro. It actually works. Oh my god, so if my base starts getting raided, 
this will ping my Discord and let me know. Dude, we're slowly but surely getting a base that is self-sufficient. Not only had we completed another objective by obtaining a car, but we were also one step closer to building the perfect solo base. Now, my plan for the next while was to actually take a step back from objectives and focus on some PvP. So I headed to the airfield, and when I got there, I got a lot more than I bargained for. Oh my god. Wait. That could be huge. Oh my lord, 800 meters? Securing a lock crate was still on my objective list. We could do that. But as I mentioned from the start, these are often competed for. Oh. I have no idea where that's from. Genuinely no idea. Oh no, he's over there. I forgot I'm 0 to 800. I was 0 to 800 from the tire, man. No! Oh, he's also doing the same. It again. Is he dead? He's dead. Let's go. Just trying to heal. Okay, pretty solid kill. Um, we need to make sure he started the event though. Oh, there's a timer. Wait, is this what I need the blue key card for? I think it is. Okay, we need to get back to base. We need to get the blue key card, and we need to come back. Oh shit. One dead. I killed him! Oh my god, my heart right now, it's pumping. Why'd that gun sound so beefy, bro? Oh my god, these guys have been looting. Where'd I kill him? Right here, SVD. Okay, good thing I killed this guy first. Okay, we're good. Nice. Good kills. Right, let's go get this key card and hope that it works. After fighting off all the people coming to do this lock create, I had to rush back to base and grab the blue key card. This would allow me to instantly unlock the create. And then... Oh my god. Okay. Okay, that ruined the key card. Holy! It just goes to show that sometimes things happen for a reason. My little excursion to the airfield allowed me to complete yet another objective, and we were now over halfway to completing my solo journey. I wanted to see if this luck would continue, but second time around, it didn't go so much to plan. What the fuck? Oh, no way. Running straight into two guys didn't exactly give me a fighting chance. But that's the life of a solo, I guess. Sometimes we lose, and other times we win. He's dead. Let's go. 
Oh my god, Minchan balls, let's go. Oh my god. Oh my god. We need to run. I really need these sleeping bags, man. And I have no room. But this vault kit is worth 2 million. Why did they have that on them? This vault kit was worth over 2 million at the trader. It was extremely rare. So I headed straight back to the bunker and placed it down. This thing was absolutely huge. And it would allow me to store a bunch more loot much more safely. In fact, it had over 1,000 slots, and boy did it make the vault look good. I took this time to organise the base, but it was getting late into the evening. So by the time I was done, it was time to say goodbye to day two. I think I've fully organised the base. It's looking good. So on this left side, we've got like grenades, we got ammo, magazines, that sort of thing. Over here we got weapons. Um, we got armor, clothing, uh, this is our raid alarm still, much more clothing, all of our guns in here, well, a few of them, and then the main vault, which is where all our main loot is, and in here we got all our high tier weapons, we got all our raid stuff, our car keys, our sellables, all our key cards, and then nails and code locks. Day 3, believe it or not, was my final day on the server. So far, I had completed just over half of the objectives, a grand total of 8 out of the total 15. But most of the ones that remained were the most challenging. To be honest, I expected it to take at least a full week to complete this entire list, but little did I know what was in store for me when I logged on that day. Okay, day three, and I don't think we've been raided. To start off day three, I wanted to do a raid, and although I had a lot of charcoal, I was missing sulfur. So I headed out with a bunch of keys, which was the best way I knew of getting the powders I needed. Ah yes, another sulfur. Another sulfur, and a key card for the quarry, nice. By the time I had completed my first run, I could craft one C4. We can actually make a C4 now. But just to be safe, I decided I would do another key run in order to get the supplies I needed to craft a second C4. Okay, let's park up here and go do our first key. Another sulfur, let's go. Another charcoal. Charcoal. Nice. We have enough for two homemades. We can make two homemades. With the ability to make two homemade breaching charges, I wanted to consider doing a raid. Which is exactly when I remembered the shed base I had seen on day one. So I got to crafting C4, before realising that I was missing radios, a key component to craft C4. Luckily my neighbours were online and I could put our alliance to use. Hello? Oh. Hello? Hello? Do you guys have a radio? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll just take two there. Here, I have a present for you as well. Oh. Thank you. Radio acquired. Yeah, you're welcome, man. I'm gonna go do a raid now, hopefully. See you later. Alright, man, if you need help, just uh, <laughs> shout out, yeah? Will do. Thanks to the neighbors, we could return to the bunker and use these radios to craft the C4. There is homemade breaching charge. The only thing left to do now was get in our boat and go around the island to see if this raid was still possible.
Okay, boat's locked. Eco Raid is 1.6 kilometers away. It had been a few days since I had checked on this base, but the hope was that it was still one shed. Oh no, dude, it looks like he's built up. We might have to come back with more C4. Oh, dude, he has so much storage. We have to come raid the... I mean, we could raid the first door right now. Should we do that? Then we can come back? I guess so. I quickly noticed that this guy had only put one extra gate down, meaning I had enough C4 to actually raid this. Okay, I have no idea how long this takes. The problem was, the other C4 was back at the bunker. So I would have to blow up this first door, loot what I could, and then come back with the C4 to blow up the shed. <laughs> Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's see what we got. Ooh, okay. A few guns and stuff. More sulfur. Other M2 mag. Oh, here we go. Oh my god. Oh my gosh! This guy has loads! Dude, this guy has loads! Oh my god, he's loaded! Okay, let's get out of here, get back to the boat. We need to come back with another C4. This base was loaded, and I had only blown one door so far. When I made it back to the bunker, I had realized I already made profit, so anything from the shed was just gonna be a bonus. Yeah, I actually made profit just from the charcoals that guy had and sulfur. I was looking forward to seeing what was behind this shed door, so I rushed back on the boat and headed over. But the most unexpected thing happened. Wait. Someone raided at the shed while I've been gone? No way. No way. These are locked. Okay, I want to wait around. These guys might come back. Dude, what are the chances? What are the chances? Someone had come and tried to raid the shed whilst I was gone. I waited around for a while, but they didn't return, so I used some hacksaws to open the locked containers inside. Oh, dude! Holy! So many sellables, oh my god. Again, the loot inside was insane. And after grabbing everything I could, I went outside to make a stash. This way, if the guys that raided the shed returned, I wouldn't lose everything. I didn't close that. And as it turned out, it was lucky I did that. As when running back to do the second locker, I noticed the door had closed behind me. It's a guy. Unfortunately, my luck had ran out, but did it really matter? After all, I had profited from this raid already, and when I got back, the counter raiders left even more valuable loot behind. But best of all, they didn't even find my stash. So what did I lose? A kit? That was nothing compared to what we gained, and with it being night, I used this to my advantage to transfer everything back to the bunker. Oh my god. Let's go! Huge raid, bro. Huge raid. I had done it. I had successfully completed a profit rate. And from it, we obtained a bunch of items that would be put towards other tasks, such as all the knives which allowed me to complete my collection. 
so I head it over to complete the quest. The knife enthusiast accept. Completing this quest gave us a random high tier key card, but it gave us one that we already done before and to be honest I didn't really need the gear. So I left the quest guy and headed back to base in hopes of doing another challenge. With all the sellables we got from that raid, I decided it was finally time to get that helicopter. Oh my god. Let's get over to the trader. Let's see if we can get a helicopter. This was the last time I needed to make any kind of major money. So I headed over to the trader, but this time I wasn't alone. Okay, there was a guy in there. I'm just gonna run. I can't risk dying. I've got too much on me. I need the stash. Okay, there's at least one more. He's dead! Oh my god. Oh my god. For the first time on our run to the traders, someone else had been there. And a lot of shots had been fired. So I needed to grab my stash and sell everything as fast as possible to buy this helicopter. Please, game. Nope, oh, it's not there. There. Come on. Let's go. Boys, I did it. I got a helicopter. Let's go. Nice, we got a helicopter. With me completing objective after objective after objective, I knew we would be done in no time. But for now, I wanted to take a short break and focus on some key cards and PvP. Oh, another MCX spear. Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, one dead. He's dead. Dude, what is going on today? Oh my god. He's gone there. He's dead. Dude, this gun is insane! Even my PvP runs were hugely successful, with endless amounts of gear to take back to the bunker. It was on one of these trips back that another event popped up that I needed to complete. Oh, dude, oil rig golden event. This is what I need to do. I wanna land on this. This should have insane gear. And then, how do you do it? F. Um, okay, that's ruined. Oh, a C4! Alright, let's get out of here. Okay. 
That was insane. Oh my god, the loot I have right now is insane. Okay, let's come in for landing. Try not to crash. Perfect. Let's go, dude. Oh my god. Home sweet home. Dude, the amount of gear I've just got from the last two runs we've done is insane. Completing the oil rig left one last objective that was in my control. Building the perfect solo base. So I got to work on completing the bunker. The wall there. Alright, so if anyone plants on that door we should have an angle on them. Okay, I think that's perfect. Okay, perfect. So we got a window hatch to peek the stairs. We got a grenade hole, so if we throw a grenade at that floor, it'll bounce down behind this window. Then we can peek the stairs from here, and we can peek this door from here. But I'm not sure if we should... Maybe we should block this off, and then we can sit here and have a nasty peek on this door. Okay, boom. Okay, we got another peek here onto this door, which is very, very strong if anyone tries to online us. Okay, looking good. Got a little section in here, which we're gonna turn into a farming section. This is looking good, man. This is looking really good. Okay, so people cannot read these windows and they can only be opened from the inside, I believe. Yes. Nice, man. Let's go. I think that's all the infrastructure done. So all I want to do now is get the farms going. So I need to go to Trader again and buy some greenhouse kits. Okay, let's go. I gotta go to the Trader. We seem clear, boys. We seem clear. In order to complete the base, I needed to do another trip to the Trader and buy some things that would help make the base much more self-sufficient. So after selling everything, I bought what I needed and headed back to the bunker to place items such as the greenhouse for food and the sofa for extra storage. A little lamp. <laughs> and then a gas stove. And then we can cook our growing food. Ultimately, this marked the end of building the base, and I could confidently say I had the perfect solo bunker base. That left two last objectives, form some kind of enemy and attempt to defend a raid on my bunker. These were completely dependent on other players' actions, and I would need to play the waiting game. But I wasn't going to sit around in base all day waiting, so insisted on going to do some loot runs, hoping that either of these objectives would fall into place themselves. Little did I know, I had already made an enemy, and they were about to show themselves for the very first time. Oh wow, PKP? So 50 yeah. Oh my god. I'm getting raided. What? Dude, I've left the base for like 20 minutes. Okay, we're only 1.7 now. I don't know who I've annoyed, but someone is raiding our base right now. I've just got the alert in game. I've also been messaged on Discord. So this is real. Just need to go for it.
Wait, what? Wait, what? Yeah, what? That door's gone. Oh no, this door was left open. What have they raided? There was definitely a boom gone off at my flipping door. I heard it. Oh yeah, they have. Oh, I'm so lucky I put a window down. Whilst out on a roam, someone had tried to raid me. They must have been watching me for a while, however, as they knew about my back door and tried to breach it. But luckily, the window stopped them. I knew for a fact they would be back, so I waited. My front door's just opened. My front door's just closed. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Ooh. Hey man, I hear you in there closing doors. I'm coming for your base, man. Who the hell are you, bro? Open them up now. <laughs> oh, it's coming. Hey, you don't want to know who I am. I'm called the Grim Reaper and I want your booty cheeks. I want your loot. I want your boat. I want your little helicopter. And I want your dog tag. Okay, bud. Let's see how deep you can get. So we're about to get to this point right now. Okay, he's dead. Ooh, cheeky bugger. You like that one, huh? I'm not going to die without a fight. You hear me? Good, I want to fight. <laughs> How did he do it without me seeing? My first line of defense had failed, so I had to fall back to the second defense point. If they got past this, there was a good chance of me losing this rear defense. Oh, here we go, here we go. They're coming, boys, they're coming. They're pretty firing. Hit him once. Did he flop? Okay, another dead, another dead. Whew! And a grenade. Oh, he's hit me a few times there. That hurt. That really hurt. Oh, I killed another one. I'm loving this, boys. This is fun. Bro, I'm Very not gonna fun. lie. This staircase is absolute cancer. <laughs> <laughs> that peak. Well, make that another kill. Dead. <laughs> there might be one more. Hold on. I have an idea. I'm gonna flank behind them. After killing two, I knew there was a pretty good chance I could make my flank. And if I killed the last player, then I could win this raid defense. No! 
Oh, he's so low. Oh, he's so low. My flank had failed, and this would prove to be one of my biggest mistakes because by the time I had spawned back at base, it had given them enough time to plant another C4. Yep, I knew they would do it, man. Hey, uh, hey, uh, stinker. Yeah? I, 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 I don't ever lie when I tell you promises. I got your dog tag now, I just need your base. On that. Oh my god, I can't loot him. Yo, tell Dilly thanks for the flipping dog tags back. No C4 though. But I did get my dog tag back. Yeah, no, you won't be able to. Oh, he's got an angle on me. Oh, he's gonna push for the plant, dude. No, he got it. No, uh -huh. dude, I was just about to peek it. Oh my god, I can defuse it without them knowing. Okay, another one dead. Defuse it, defuse it. I defuse it. I got it, I got it. I got the C4. This base is so good. This base is so good. Oh, he got the C4 back on while I was distracted. No. Dude, this is a problem. The solo bunker might fall. It might fall. With me being on bag timer, it was a certainty that they would get past my line of defense. This would be my final stand. Kaboom! Here we go, here we go. Coming in, bitch. I got more smokes, man. I can't see. I actually can't see, bro. One's right there. Might be dead. <laughs> Dude, I'm sweating so much. I like it, I like it a lot. The space is nice. Knock, knock, we're coming in the next section. Okay, this is the final door. <laughs> this is it. This was it. The final door between them and all my loot. So I grabbed the best kit I had and find a spot where I could hold them off, or at least try. Okay, here they come.
that was it. Everything was gone. All of my loot, the vehicles I had obtained, and most importantly, the perfect solo bunker base. Up to this point, I had no idea who these guys were, or where they came from. I must have annoyed these guys at some point on my solo journey, I have no idea when, but it must have been enough for them to raid me. I don't know about you, but that forms a new enemy for me. I'll remember their names, I will be back, but that will have to wait for another story. Remember to go and play War Thunder now on PC, PlayStation or Xbox, and use my link in the description to sign up and claim your free bonus pack including premium vehicles, silver and more. Thanks again to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video.